Welcome or welcome back to Watch Advice on YouTube. It's Alexander speaking, your host. And with me today on your screens is Giuseppe Micio. Welcome, Giuseppe. Welcome, Alexander in saint <laughs> He is head of product management development here at Longines. We are at the headquarters. He is Italian, I'm Austrian. So an Italian and Austrian are going to present you a Longines novelty that is simply stunning, I can tell you. What you see already here is an incredible development Longines did. I think your teams uh, really pushed the limits. Can we say that? Yeah, yeah. This is definitely a new milestone for Longines, uh, both in terms of design, product, productions. Uh, so we are really, uh, really proud, I would say, to introduce this new Ultracron high-frequency watch. So the watch you will see in this video is fantastic. Five hertz movement. Stay tuned and we go right into the scene. Don't forget to subscribe and to hit the bell to get our latest notifications. So now on your screen, the Longines Ultracron. Giuseppe, just you said Ultracron. Ultracron. Okay. <laughs> so it's Longines you? Ultracron. Longines, Longines Ultracron. Giuseppe, please tell us about this amazing watch that for you in the first, at first sight looks like a, yeah, a nice diver probably, but it's much more than this, much more than this. Absolutely. Uh, so this watch uh, is really particular for the Longines history because it was one of the first high beat wrist watch movement uh, on a wrist watch. So actually it was in 1967 when we introduced this watch. So you have really the original piece here. So we've been inspired by this watch and we totally reworked the aesthetic. So we've been inspired. We are not doing a replica. It's really an inspiration. As you can see on the side, you have exaggerated proportion of this cushion shape case. And you will see on the new watch, new proportion and really nice finishing. But before going in details, let me say that why we're introducing this Ultracron watch, it's because Longines developed many high-frequency watches in the past. Originally, they were used for professional timekeeping activities at sports events, with high-frequency movement able to time events to one-tenth or one-hundredth of a second. So Longines was pioneer in high-frequency watches. Of course, we're talking about um, a movement uh, in the new edition. It's a five hertz. Absolutely. Five hertz movement. So you know why we are talking about high frequency. It's not four hertz, it's five hertz. Uh, 36,000 semi-oscillations of the balance wheel. And yeah, high frequency. This is why we are talking about the world high frequency. So we developed a new automatic high frequency movement, which is our L836.6 with 52 hour of power reserve and silicon balance spring. As per all our watches, automatic, we developed and we provide a five year warranty. So now if we look at the details of the watch, it's a cushion shape case, 43 millimeter. So the design, as I said, is uh, really inspired by the 1967 original piece. 
the thickness is 13 mm and the lug to lug distance is 49 mm. So it's a 300 meter water resistant. We have a screw in crown and as you can see, a nice unidirectional rotating bezel with the diving scale. For this particular model, we developed a new rotating bezel system in order to have a really better quality perception in terms of feeling and sound. If you look closer to the bezel, it's not ceramic. For the first time, we used sapphire insert on the bezel. It provides really a nice and shiny effect. We engraved the diving scale, then filled with red lacquer and superluminova on the triangle 15, 30 and 45. So really new material and special execution on this bezel. How many clicks? 120. 120 clicks. So you heard it already. I'm, I'm getting closer with the microphone once again here and I will turn it. Give me a second. So you can nicely hear the sound. The watch is making music. Sounds solid in between my fingers, I have to tell you. Oh, I, I didn't get it correctly. Let me go back. I, I want to have it. <laughs> you are like me, Alexander. I wanted to have really perfect yeah. alignment. It's, yeah, you see, perfect <laughs> alignment. No cheating. I was just uh, not getting it uh, on the point. Is it? Yeah, it is now. Okay. We shall mention on the case the nice uh, sapphire box with anti-reflecting coating on both sides. There it is. So this provides a, a nice vintage look and feel, but really with contemporary technology. Then if you dive into the dial, you can see at six o'clock this really particular logo, which is the Ultracron logo. It's a nice wave, really iconic logo to show that this is a high frequency movement. If you look even closer, there is a nice facet on this logo and this gives a nice reflection on it. So the light really bumps into this nice logo, which is really iconic to Longines. So Ultracron stands for Ultra Chronometer. So this is a big novelty for Longines. We introduced for the first time a new certification for the watch head. So it's the same movement accuracy as the COSC certification, minus four plus six, but in watch head. So big steps in terms of quality for Longines. So it's not as it is normally done that the uh, movement alone, the caliber alone goes to COSC is then being certified chronometer and then it's been encased into the watch head, the entire watch head, the fully ready to sell watch is being tested. Exactly. It's the ready to sell watch, but without the strap or the bracelet. Perfectly said. Yeah. yeah. And this is tested. And interesting enough, I will just pick the card. This is the card that comes along and you can see written officially certified by Time Lab in Geneva. Can you explain us what Time Lab in Geneva is? So Time Lab in Geneva is an independent laboratory that provides the ultra chronometer certification. So every watch will be certified and every customer will receive the certification. Why is not COSC doing such a certification? Why is it Time Lab doing? People might, might ask the question, oh, what, what Time Lab? I've never heard about Time Lab. Because at the moment, the, the COSC is not providing the ultra chronometer uh, certification. I see. That's why we collaborate uh, with Time Lab Geneva. And Minus four plus six seconds, is this really uh, already the end of what is possible in the watch or is this just uh, to start with? I imagine that a five hertz watch should or will be more precise than minus four plus six seconds. Definitely, this is really the first steps uh, for Longines. We want to push the limits of our movements. We have to, to continue. You will see uh, in the future some more uh, advanced specifications. Coming and um, coming, future. Yeah. Uh, also done in cooperation with Time Lab. 
Let's see. Okay, let's see. It's open at the moment, so but for the moment okay. we are working with TimeLab. I'm asking this question, so if you really have been listening carefully, this is, to make it brief and short, only the beginning. And this is the watch that is now coming to the market as an ultra chrono watch, 5 hertz movement, 36,000 semi-oscillations of the movement. And if you look how the second hand swipes over the die, you can't see that it is ticking. You get the impression that it is not a mechanical movement in the background, but more a, uh, a quartz movement or whatever the second hand looks like if it is continuously without ticking, swiping over the dial. And yeah, if Longin starts, starts such a history, Giuseppe, it's not the end. No, it's just the beginning, Alexander. Like Absolutely. Perfect readability. You have the hands distinguished. The minute hand is in red. The hour hand is silver. But what you need when you dive is the minute hand. That's the more important hand, and this is clearly for its color marked. You can see it. Yeah, nice. Sports watch. Alexander, I'm surprised you didn't ask about the date window. <laughs> there is no date window. If there is no date window, there is none. I'm not missing. On the original piece, yeah, we have a date window. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> you know, um, I am not... Uh, I am not the big fan of date windows, you know? Um, and if I am looking at the watch as it is now, it is perfectly harmonic for me. So there is nothing missing. At a look, I really, when I saw the watch this morning for the first time, I really said, wow, perfect. It's reduced and perfect. What would, do we really need a date window here? I don't know. What do you we, say? We, we decided, uh, because we, had, we have a lot of comments about the date window and on this particular piece, it's funny because on the original piece, there is a date and we decided to remove it. As you say, in order to get a really balanced design uh, dial. Uh, I don't know, look. Um, yeah. Everybody watching the video now, please, the comment section, tell me what, uh, what you think. Um, here, you have the date window. And um, in my humble opinion, it's like something that should be there. Okay, yeah, I know people want the date window. And yeah, we have to look back uh, 1967. It was very useful to know the date. But today, uh, honestly, who needs a date window? You take your smartphone. You don't need it. But what you get instead is a super harmonic, super harmonic dial. And I don't, I don't see the date window here. <laughs> this is, look, I'm trying to, to move this style on your screens as good as I can. A matte surface, absorbing the light, delivering excellent readability. And these harmonic uh, indexes at both positions, nine and three o'clock. Do you really think that they should be disturbed by a date window? No, I don't think so. Did I say it nicely? <laughs> Giuseppe is smiling here in the back. <laughs> it's, a, it's always funny, the, the date window debate. Yeah, I know. It's a, and we will have, I hope we will have lots of comments here concerning that. Uh, um, what I've been saying, maybe uh, there are many who would disagree and say, no, how can the guy in the video tell that I don't need a date window? I don't know. I'm, I'm just saying it. <laughs> On the back, we have our nice Ultracron logo, stamped and polished, and the engraving with the Ultrachronometer officially certified. We wanted to stay true to the original piece with the uh, screw down uh, case back and no open case back. This logo is just really uh, iconic. So we equipped this watch with this nice uh, seven row bracelet. It's a free rotating bracelet, so it's not integrated and fixed on the case. In order to give this kind of uh, vintage look. And a nice uh, satin finished on the bigger links and the polished small links. It's tapering from 22 millimeters 
to 18 at the buckle. So, and if now you think um, that this is a watch that literally would look good with a NATO, I can already tell you there is the option. You can dismantle the bracelet. In the box comes the watch as you see it here. Additionally, you get this NATO with the Ultra Crown. Ultra Crown. Ultra Crown. Ultra Crown. <laughs> I do say it in English, Ultra Crown, but French pronunciation is Ultra Crown. Logo, you get the NATO. And since uh, you have to do some um, little adjustment, you see Longe in here on the NATO. And you also get the, the necessary tooling from Longe. And this is what you need. You will have to go to the spring bar. You will have to insert the tooling and push in one direction. Then the spring bar will open. You will be able to dismantle. And we will do this, not in front of the camera this time, but we will do it and we will show you the watch just um, uh, now with the NATO. Giuseppe's magic hands just exchanged the bracelet to the NATO at first glance. So what do you think? Is this, is this a watch that should be worn on a NATO, like the one we see here? Or is this a watch that should be worn on the bracelet? So comment sections, please. I'm, I'm keen to read also your thoughts about this design detail of the watch besides the date window. So please, what do you think? Pin buckle, yeah, with the um, hourglass logo, the legendary hourglass logo of Longin. And yeah, classical NATO, real NATO. You can really uh, open it up as one. It's not then fully attached NATO as some other brands already do. You can really you slide in and yeah. It adds, yeah, it adds. Uh, I am, I'm hearing uh, some, some of you saying already it, it's adding, uh, yeah, thickness. Uh, of course, it's adding thickness. Um, look, yeah, this is additional, some additional millimeters coming on top. Um, the, will it uh, change anything? I don't think so, but okay. You will anyhow see the wrist shots. And of course, we are going to surprise you. This is not it yet. There is also an option with a dark brown leather strip. Alexander, what do you think about the price? <laughs> Difficult question. Um, since, but, but since it is Longin, um, I estimate um, a price of around uh, 3,000 uh, 3, uh, Swiss francs, euros, something like this. Maybe a little bit more, but not much more, I think. You are correct this time. I'm correct? Yes. Okay. So we, we are delivering uh, four references. Mm -hmm. So we have two special boxes. The first one, the watch is delivered on leather bracelet and an additional NATO strap, which is at 3,300 Swiss francs. The second special box comes on the uh, metal bracelet and the additional NATO straps at 3,500 Swiss francs. So this is always in combination with a box? Yeah. Okay. So this is our heritage uh, box. Yes. And the tooling to exchange. Yes. The tooling is And the tooling. Yeah. Yeah. These two boxes are non limited, so no uh, limited production. And we add two other references, one on leather strap that starts at 3,000. Sharp. Yeah. 3,000 sharp. Sharp. Wow. And another reference on metal bracelet at 3,250 Swiss francs. So you really, um, the range is from 3,000 to 3,500, depending on what you choose. Exactly. Okay. The combinations you choose. Can you... Uh, this will, is, it will be a question that will come for sure, say, okay, if I buy the 3000 version, can I add the NATO on top? Can I get it as a, uh, can I buy the NATO only? Yes, absolutely. We so have you, you don't have to buy the box? No. Okay, that's fair. 
That's very fair. We provide all our bracelet on our um, watch strap accessories program, okay. so you can buy it separately. So it's not it's not mandatory that you buy, that you need to buy a box to get an auto. No. Oh, that's very fair. That's really nice. Congratulations, guys. Um, I know that brands are fooling uh, people, um, um, forcing them to get a certain execution, but then they have to upgrade the price or add some. That's good. No limitations. Wonderful. Why should limit uh, such a watch? Even if it's your 190th anniversary this year, I don't think that there's a reason to limit a watch in terms of, of, uh, um, of quantities. Um, very fair. Congratulations. Well, thanks for watching this presentation of the new Ultra Cron. I learned to pronounce it in the way as they do in Neuchâtel. Ultra Cron. No, it's not Ultra Cron, it's Ultra Cron. Giuseppe. From an Italian, by the way. Yeah? <laughs> how funny is this? The Austrian is being, uh, yeah, teached by an Italian how to pronounce correctly. Uh, no. How do you like the watch? What's your impressions? Um, Giuseppe is, it was so excited this morning when, he, uh, when we came uh, to present this project. This is something that really seems to carry a lot of heart, blood, DNA and... Passion. Passion. Passion is the world. And uh, yeah, th this watch, uh, this particular watch really represents uh, the, the history of Longines, the heritage, the pioneer spirit and keeping an elegant touch so we are really happy and proud with this development. It's really a, a, an incred incredible watch, uh, particularly on the leather strap, which is my favorite, oh. which is yours. You already chose your favorite. Then I have to do it too. Oh, I can't. Uh, okay, my favorite is the NATO. <laughs> but unfortunately, we have been, uh, yeah, uh, uh, putting it back on the, on, the, uh, on the bracelet. So, but my favorite will be the worn with NATO. Yeah, nice. I have to say, um, chapeau, guys, um, what you've been doing here, uh, also in terms of what will come. We heard it in the video, this is just the beginning in terms of precision, I'm sure. I don't, he didn't tell me anything. I, uh, they, they won't uh, announce things that they cannot announce, but it's me, Alexander, telling you. Uh, five hertz movement uh, with the knowledge and the passion and, and also with ETA in the background the biggest and most successful manufacturer of me mechanical movements. If you have such possibilities embedded in a group like the Swatch Group, expect I expect the watch to run in the next coming editions, minus two, plus two, minus one, plus one seconds, something there. And I'm not kidding. I really expect them to do such things. He's looking at me like, don't say such, but it's me. It's not them telling, it's me expecting it because I know how passionate and, and motivated they are at Login. So stay tuned. Um, comments in the section, comment section of, of course. Uh, don't forget the little discussion about date window or not date window and uh, NATO or, uh, yeah. Thanks for watching guys. Your comments are welcome. Questions always are welcome. If I can't answer them, he will do. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned on Watch Advice on YouTube and bye-bye.